Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick video uh, to try to help out with the um, the continuous random variables and that we're now we're dealing with the central limit theorem. Anyhow, I pulled this question off of the benchmark. Some of you might have had this one uh, and that's okay. Um, but I do want to just, I want to go through, I want to show you how I am looking for your data to be presented in the template. Uh, mostly because like I use the template a lot to give people partial credit and if people poorly use the template uh, it makes it so that I just I can't track what your work is um, and give you the partial credit that, that you actually deserve uh, so this is I really want to be able to help you guys out okay so basically for the lab template what I'm looking for is just for the scenario up here it's not like a huge deal but all we're going to do is we're just going to copy the main thing and we're going to paste it right in oh okay hold on we're going to paste it here and there we go okay so now that I've got the scenario and now I can kind of start seeing what the questions are uh, here are the, the specific questions if I want to I think I can just copy and paste these as well copy and in the question I should probably insert a couple more lines Let's insert a line insert a line so you can make this like as big or as small as you need to and let's see what happens when I paste this thing in uh, okay so it kind of looks weird let's not do it like that um, what we can do is we can say you know we're looking for oh I don't know here's here's what we'll do I'll just take a screenshot of this real quick give me a second there we go okay so I'm just going to take a little screenshot of this and I'm just going to copy this whole thing let's see if I can do it and let's see if I can paste it in here yeah so I've got now just a little screenshot I'll kind of pull this off to the side and it's kind of it's way too big for what I need so I'm just going to shrink it down and I'm going to pull it over here okay so this is just so that we have an idea making sure that we're actually answering the questions that we need to and now we can move on okay so now that I'm here at the work for these problems what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to determine what the variables are and you're going to need to be very precise about keeping track of everything because that's the hardest part here if you can't keep track of your variables you're never going to have success in answering your questions okay so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to write out mu hold on let's get a better font going on and maybe a smaller font yeah we'll go down to 12 or something and we'll do this guy okay so here we go we're going to type that mu I still have a bolded here we go mu equals okay and then we're going to actually figure out what the true mean is okay so if we read up here in our scenario it says the average number of miles in thousands that the cars tires will function before needing replacement is 73 okay so we're just going to put this down as 73 give me a second looks like I have a whole bunch of text boxes that are kind of all over the place okay and yeah so we'll put in 73 sorry 73 and there we go 73 and we'll put here this is in thousands thousand miles okay and then we see that the standard deviation so I can put that the standard deviation of our scenario is equal to 12 now the cool thing is is that the standard deviation is going to be in the same units as mu so we can say that this is thousand miles as well let's just open that up just a little bit okay so now we've got mu we've got our standard deviation now it says suppose that 40 randomly selected tires are tested okay so we can put that n which is equal to maybe over here I'll put sample size is equal to n 
and that equals 12. Oh, sorry, not 12. Sorry, 40. I am round all answers to four decimal places where needed. Okay, so now let's go down to some of our questions because we're going to need to be able to answer a few of these. So our first question in A, so you know what, just for keeping things together, A, I can say that N and then parenthesis. Okay, so the first part is going to be equal to like a, 73,000 and uh, you know what let's do it let's do it a little bit differently so n is 73 or here we'll, we know that it's the mu and then we know that it's going to be sigma squared all right so that's kind of what the baseline distribution is looking at okay so if that's what what we're trying to find we need to find mu well we know that n is going to be equal or the mu is going to be equal to 73 now we just have to know well what is sigma squared remember that's the variance okay well if we go back up here we know that the standard deviation that is equal to sigma and so if we need sigma squared which it would be the variance let's just do it as capital V the variance of X is equal to sigma squared Okay, so now all we would have to do is take sigma and square it. And our units are going to be, okay, so this is going to be 1,000 miles, and we have to square that whole thing. All right, so this sigma, or this variance is really, really big. Okay, let's insert a few more lines there, and let's continue on our merry way. Okay, so now that we have this 144, we can just drop that guy right on in, and we say that that should be 144. Okay, so now let's do part B. Sorry. So B here. I know that, once again, this is going to be in is going to be mu but this time it's going to be sigma with respect to x bar squared okay so if we do this again we've got 73 as our mean and this time we need to find sigma x bar and square it okay so if we want to know the standard deviation or right here I'll write it out like this sigma underscore x bar this is where we're using our central limit theorem idea from and we need to figure out what sigma yeah sorry I misspelled that what this equals so I am going to write out our equation real quick so this is going to be equal to sigma divided by the square root of n because we are dealing with a sample size. Okay, so we have everything that we need. We can literally just take 12 divided by the square root of our sample size, which is right here, sample size of 40. And we can hit kind of enter right there, and that gives us this guy. And the units are the same as the original, 1,000 miles. Okay, so there we go. We've got this guy now. Now, if we want the variance, the variance of x with respect to x bar, that's going to equal sigma x bar squared. And that is just going to equal... our sigma x bar that we just calculated or the standard deviation with respect to x bar and we're going to square it and the units are the same as the original variance units okay so now that we've got that uh, we can put in our variance there so that's going to be 3.6 
All right, so there we go. We're able to get our 3.6. All right, so now we can come over and we can probably do C and we can do D. So I'm just gonna kind of scroll my way on down and I'm gonna input my next guy. Here's part C. All right, so this says if a randomly selected individual tire is tested, find the probability that the number of miles and thousands before it will need to be replaced is between 71.6 thousand and 73.2 thousand. All right, so since we're only using an individual tire, we're going to be using the original distribution or the distribution of single measurements. Okay, so let's go over to our commander. Let's do a quick plot real quick, just so that we can see this. We go to distributions, continuous, normal, and we're gonna plot a normal. All right, and so our mean, we know it is 73. And our standard deviations, as it was given to us, is 12. And we want to go from 71.6, let's just copy this, and we'll paste it. Oops, sorry. Let me try that again. 71.6 and 73.2. And let's shade this, I don't know. What does that look like? Sure, purple. Okay, and okay. And when we graph this guy, we can see the area shaded under the curve. And now I don't know exactly what this what this proportion is, and it's probably going to be uh, pretty small between those two specific values. Uh, but you know, if I had to guess from this, I'd say I don't know. Maybe that would be ten percent. It'll at least get me in the ballpark. If I see, if I get a value that's like way bigger, uh, I know that I have an issue. Okay, so with that being said, let's go into our commander and let's go do a normal distribution and let's look at the probabilities. All right, so our mean is still 73 and our standard deviation is 12. And our variable values that we're interested in are uh, 73.2 and if I put a comma I can do two of them at the same time it saves you a little bit of time and 71.6 and I'm going to give these it's the lower tail so we can see that I'm going to find the area to the left of this 73.2 and I'm going to find the area to the left of this 71.6 and when I subtract the two from each other I'll just be left with this little spot left okay and I'll go ahead and click OK and I get these two values. Okay, I'm going to copy them. And, sorry, we're going to copy and paste them. And I'm just going to put a minus sign between the two. So, and because of the order that I put them in, it makes it so that the area to the left was the bigger one for the 73.2, and then the smaller one was the 71.6. If you put them in the wrong order, you can just flip them around so that you're doing this big number minus the little number. And we hit OK, and yeah, it's about like 5%. So I'm going to copy this guy. And I can paste it in here as my value, but I better write a probability statement. So I want us to write the probability that we're going to put in 71.6 is going to be less than our value. And then do 73.2. There's my probability statement. What's the probability that we are between those two values? I can even put an equal sign right there. And we know that, oh, I copied the wrong thing. We'll copy that guy. And we'll paste it. And so we've got it at about 5%. Okay, so now we're also going to do this. So part D, we're going to do this for a sample. So this thing is actually like the exact same statement with a single caveat. This now is no longer the distribution of a single, but it's with respect to x bar. All right, so let's look at this guy now. Here we go. So we still want to know the distance or the probability of being between these two. So if we look at the probability being between these two, what we need to do is we now need to use the new sigma x bar okay and that'll change our standard deviation so we can go up to our models oh sorry not models we can go to distributions continuous normal normal probabilities 
So the critical points are our variable values. Those stay the same. The mean stays the same, but the standard deviation changes. And the reason why we should do this in Excel or something this is that so that we can copy and paste this number. Typing it in, you're just going to set yourself up for a trans for a, basically a transcription error. So I'm going to copy that value and I'm going to paste it right on in. Let's make sure that it looks okay. Yeah, that looks great. And I'm going to do the lower tail again, looking between those two. And I'll click OK. And I got between these two numbers. And let's just do copy and paste. And we'll subtract two from there. And this time we get like a 31%. Let's see if that makes sense. Let's plot it again. Distributions, normal, plot it. The only thing that we really need to change once again is the standard deviation. There we go. And if we go to the front, that looks right. And I click OK. And here, yep, there's a lot more area there. Seems reasonable that it's about 30%. Okay, so that's how you do those two. Now if we come here and we look at part E, it asks us if the assumption of the normal distribution is necessary. So up here it said like assume that they're normal. Now remember for the central limit theorem, uh, here I'll put it for the central limit theorem, we need to know something. So either the original, original distribution is normal. Or sample size, remember that's little n, is um, at least 30. All right, so if we look at this, it said assume the normal distribution, but we knew that because 40 tires are tested, we didn't even have to assume that it's normal. The central limit theorem says that the sampling distribution will be approximately normally distributed if the original distribution is normal or the sampling size is at least a size of 30. Okay, so now that we have all, so uh, by the central limit theorem, we would say no need to assume normality. Okay, so look how I tried to organize this. I tried to put the scenario up top try to put the questions in some scenario like this. Now, sometimes I know the questions are kind of like flung all over the place, uh, and you can kind of type them out how you want to see them, but just so that we have, you know, an idea of which questions we're trying to answer, and then the work, like we're systematically going through, giving all of our variables, and then we are putting them in here. Now, once we do this, uh, you can put it in the answer. I'm not too worried about the difference, like if you put stuff in work very, versus the answer. So I'm just going to delete that out. Now, the last thing that I want you to do is I want you to come down here and I want you to copy everything that you find in the R Studio all the way up until where it says like we're actually loading in R Commander. I'm just going to copy all of that. Just do a nice control C and then paste it at the very bottom. Now you might think like why on earth did I put this in the bottom? I have no idea what this says. Well the thing is is that I know what it says and so I can actually go back and give you partial credit if I can go back and actually read what you did. Like maybe I saw that hey this standard deviation was the only thing that was wrong and everything else was right. I can give you almost a hundred percent on your points if I can see that there is just a small error. But the only way I can do that is if you copy and paste your entire output. Um, and you can just put it right at the end. It doesn't, you, you can just put it at the end so that only I have to look at it. Uh, and then in here I can see like did you set your variables up correctly and if you will do this it will make my job a lot easier of being able to go back and give you partial credit and be able to improve your grades. So anyways I hope that that kind of helped out with the central limit theorem process and also about how you can improve your work so that not only can you just get the answers you know just do a better job on your homework the first time but also that I can give you more partial credit.